Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Today, we're talking about interview preparation for all of you job seekers out there. Today is your day because this is the topic. How do you prepare for interviews? How are you best prepared? How do you present yourself well? What should you do before you get into the interview? What should you do while you're in the interview? And is there anything you could do after the interview? We're going to talk about all of that and more. I got people jumping in from YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter slash X and also some other place we're streaming today. So I say hello because I can see all of your comments. Would love to chat with you about your interviewing experiences. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. If you have questions at any time, feel free to jump in uh, and consider becoming a Design Champ member so you get more behind the scenes content and more stuff like this. This is actually just a piece, just a small piece of a larger presentation that we had inside of my Design Champs community, which is pretty fun. So uh, again, if you want the unedited extended version of this presentation, become a Design Champs member. All you got to do is hit that QR code, scan that thing up there, or the link is down in the description. Let's jump in and start talking about interview prep day. Hello to everybody in London. Hello, Rathis on LinkedIn. Hello, Feline from YouTube. Hello, everybody. Let's jump in and talk a little bit about interview preparation, shall we? Uh, yeah. First thing we should probably do is review some industry terms. You should prepare yourself for any interview by being ready, by being knowledgeable. Also, not just the large kind of spectrum industry terms we're about to go over, but also anything that's specific to the job that you're actually applying for, that's probably something you should be in the know about. So if somebody says to you, hey, what kind of return or ROI have you seen in past projects or clients or companies? And you go, uh, ROI, I don't fully understand what that means. We're probably gonna have problems, right? So understanding some industry terms and also job specific terms that might apply to the position you're jumping into. Let's talk about a couple of them. Let's talk about some design terms. If you don't know what typography or color theory or layout means, we got problems. We're needing to jump in and really like dive deep into some of these design terms because you should probably know these. If you're brand spanking new to design, I get you. You need to learn, I get it. But if you're applying for jobs, it probably means you're not brand spanking new. And if you don't know a lot of these design terms, you're gonna sound like you're brand spanking new. Color theory, white space, contrast, hierarchy, branding, visual identity. How about things like user experience, user interface, knowing the difference between those two? Probably kind of important so that uh, you don't say something silly. Uh, wireframing, prototyping, responsive design, vector graphics, raster graphics. Do you know the difference between the two? You should probably need to know those. Resolution, pixel density, right? DPI, dots per inch, things like, yes, all the different color you know, uh, like scales or color spectrums and all that kind of stuff, kerning, letting alignment. Ugh, okay, you probably need to know a lot of these design terms. But what about the fact that all design, every single bit of design work that we do actually has something to do with business. It has something to do with uh, return on investment. It has something to do with leads or traffic or revenue or the actual business goals of the job that you're applying for. So you probably need to know some of these business terms. Let's talk about bootstrap, burn rate, cash flow, equity, funding, growth hacking, incubator, business model, market analysis. I would say this left column probably has a lot to do with startups. How about the, you know, the middle column? Lean startup, monetization, pitch deck, uh, runway, speed funding, scale up, traction, user acquisition, valuation, probably again, equally important things. How about exit strategy, ROI, KPIs, MVPs, pivot, angel investor, or pitch? These things probably matter. Now, Let's talk. If anybody has uh, any questions in the chat, feel free. Put them in the chat. Can't wait to answer those questions for you. How are we streaming? How are we doing? Everything flowing okay? Seems like it on YouTube especially. Maybe we're having some issues on some of the other platforms. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with these other platforms lately, but we are having problems. Let's talk about the next thing you should probably do and practice to prepare because we're still talking about being prepared and that is you should probably practice answering some questions really honestly because you know you're going into an interview you know that you're going to be asked questions let's talk about those types of questions that you're going to get asked here's some really generic questions that you might get asked describe your creative process or how do you get unstuck creatively that's a that's a decent question because and especially the first one your creative process 
I was just talking to my Design Champs community the other day about this, about how a large percentage, 51% of the reason you might get hired is actually what we call team fit. Team fit has to do a lot more with soft skills than hard skills. So great, you have a portfolio, you know how to use Figma, you understand how to use color and typography, awesome. But do you have a creative process? And is your creative process able to lend itself to our creative process, right? These things actually matter. How about, to what degree in the past have you been involved in the conceptual or strategy phase? I think a lot of new designers think they're gonna go into a creative interview, a design interview, and the questions that they're gonna be asked is about design things, like color, typography, your portfolio, and yes, there might be some of that, but there's a general expectation that if you're in that meeting, if you're in that interview, it's because you know those things. I don't feel like if when I'm interviewing designers, I need to ask you about color or typography. I see it demonstrated inside of your portfolio. The questions you're going to be asked is strategy, concept, business, all right? How about this one? What are the goals of this project uh, and your thought process behind the solution? This is a question that might get asked directly in response to your portfolio. So again, they're not just gonna wanna see pretty visuals. They're not just gonna wanna see your best dribble shot and go, look, I can make stuff pretty. I actually, can I be really honest? I interviewed somebody one time and that was their response to everything. When I asked them strategy questions, conceptual questions, what role they played in the business and how that came to be, all they had was, I did that because I liked the way it looked. And that person did not get the job. And I'm telling you right now, if that's you, you're probably not going to get the job either. So make sure that you have better answers to these questions than just, I thought it was pretty. Tell us about a time when a client disliked your work. This is a sneaky question because this question actually has a lot less to do with the horrible, bad client that you worked with and more about you because any smart, mature hiring manager or senior designer who is interviewing you knows that there's probably a whole lot less bad clients and a whole lot more bad vendors or bad designers or bad freelancers or bad whatever service providers. And so tell us about a time that a client disliked your work has a lot more to do with your response to input feedback and how you handled that, right? If you fly off the rails and say, well, I told that client to go pack sand because obviously they don't realize that design school has taught me, woof, that's not gonna go well. Uh, it's gonna show a whole lot of ego and pride. You don't wanna do that. Here's another good question. How do you stay organized uh, and provide, when provided with multiple designs, assets, files, ideas? This is actually another one of those soft skills questions. How do you do with stress? How do you do with lots of projects? Do you have a process for thinking about the way that you work on projects? Or are you just grasping at straws, hoping to knock something out of the park? Or do you know how to actually land a single, land a double, make it happen and get work done? It's kind of an important question. Here's another one. What kind of questions do you ask before beginning a design project? Which piece of information is of the utmost value? Do you see how these questions have so much to do with design thinking? with process, with your capabilities, with how you manage stress, how you work with people, are you a good team fit? So tell us about a project which has been your greatest achievement. This is actually a great question. It's time for you to brag about your team, brag about the work that was done, be excited about the results. And here's a little, can I just give you some, some thoughts and some, some encouragement here. When you speak, don't be speaking about the value that was brought to you. Always be speaking about the value that you were bringing to the client, to the customer, to the user. Always be speaking about your excitement there. If you don't have any excitement for that, you better drum up some excitement for that. Because if all of you care about, all you care about, excuse me, is serving yourself, building your portfolio, making yourself look better, uh, again, that's a team fit issue. Nobody's going to want to hire you. Okay. What kind of rules, culture, and structure need to exist to foster team collaboration? This is actually kind of a fun question. I love this question because it starts to uh, really set the tone for, are you going to be a junior designer here forever? Or are you at any point in time going to want to elevate and think about what's best for the team, right? What people who think about what's best for the team, those are leaders. And we're always looking for potential leaders. I'll tell you that. What are the qualities you look for in a manager? Another interesting question, right? Don't let it be somebody who listens to me because I know what I'm doing. That's a really, really bad answer. <laughs> it should probably have something to do 
with somebody who has a like maturity, uh, the ability to communicate well, give you clear direction, and helps bring together and assemble a team. I'm not trying to force an answer down your throat. That's probably a decent question or a decent answer to that question. Hey, let's talk about other categories of questions people might ask you in an interview. Process questions, we covered a lot of those. Tell me about a time. Those are great questions because I get so much information about who you are and how you deal with things and how you manage things. I love those types of questions. Interpersonal communications, how you email, how you slack. Do you like async? Do you like standups? Do you like live meetings? Measuring success and failure. Do you understand what it is to actually get results, to hit key performance indicators, set those, achieve those? I'm talking really fast, probably. probably needs to. Uh, starting projects, right? How do you start projects? Maybe even how you finish projects and how do you gather feedback and data? Now, after you've asked a lot of these questions uh, or been asked a lot of these questions and given a lot of these answers, you're gonna need to showcase some work. You're probably gonna be expected at some point, whether it's a single interview or multi-step interview, which are very, very common, you're gonna be required to show some sample work. We're gonna talk about that. But let's talk about some comments we have in the chat here from Feline Erie. Should the main CTA on a small business landing page just be book a consultation or contract? It depends. I wish I had a better answer for you besides it depends. But what is that small business trying to accomplish? That's where the strategy comes into place. What do you want? What are we trying to do? And at the end of the day, what that really means for me as a diagnostic technician and asker of questions is... I need to figure out what matters most and where I can move the needle and help you out, right? If you come to me and say, Jesse, um, we want to hire you to build this website. And I say, why? And they say, because we just don't like how it looks. I'm actually not too stoked or psyched about taking you on as a client because how it looks is subjective to the owners. And I'm not going to get a lot of feedback. Or excuse me. I'm not going to get a lot of repeat customer out of that customer. I'm probably not going to get a testimonial and I'm sure is not going to get word of mouth clientele because it's such a subjective thing. But if you say, hey, Jesse, we're making $50,000 a year and we want to increase our revenue, I take a look at the website and I go, man, I see three things right away. Language, call to actions, and clear value propositions that could immediately help you. And we'll do that with a little SEO, with a little bit of redesign, with a little bit of copywriting, with some better graphics images and making it responsive because that's just that you need that. Your website stinks on the mobile. If I can fix those things and I say, I want us to see an increase in sales from that 50K mark. And I see all of a sudden 60K coming that year for the business, 70K come in, and it's because of the work that I've done. Boom, all of a sudden my work is hyper valuable. So with all that being said, Elon Erie, make sure that you are establishing what the metric, what does success look like for any particular project and set reasonable key performance indicators KPIs to make sure you're hitting those goals. Dylan says, how's the job market looking for entry-level positions now that the holidays are over? I'm going to be really honest. They're not the best that they've ever been. I think we just heard that another couple of large companies, large organizations and corporations have laid off large amounts of their creative team. This is why I think the rise of freelance is as important as it's ever been. The, 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 the growth of your freelance business, the growth of you know, what you do like in your side hustle, on the side, your personal brand, all of these things matter. It's not bad, it's not impossible, but some of the things you learn in this live stream today will definitely help uh, with that process, okay? So just make sure that you are dialing into a lot of things I say here, using your strengths, leveraging your skills, not just what I say, because at the end of the day, I'm just somebody giving you some advice, some encouragement, right? But do what makes sense to you to land those positions. Let's jump into the next piece about showing your work. You're going to have to show some sample work. Okay. So, uh, the first thing we should be talking about is yes, you should be able to show some single shots on dribble in your portfolio, individual pieces that you're proud of, but you should also have, and I always recommend two to three case studies. These are full case studies that showcase a lot of the details that we've just been talking about, right? Your process, your role that you played, the outcomes, the performance of it, the measurements of success, all of these things matter and you should be able to show these in those two to three case studies. Your case studies should be relevant to the work that you're applying for, the job you're applying for. They should be somewhat recent. Don't show me things from 10 years ago. I need to know, in the words of Tina Turner, what have you done for me lately? Ooh, ooh. And you need to make sure that you're actually showing recent, 
relevant work and it's the work that you want to do and it's in line with what you're applying for okay so case studies you should also be showing some concept projects and don't be afraid to show some work in progress works in progress are a good thing okay so we need to be showing those works but there is a huge difference between showing your work and having confidence in talking through your work. I actually, here's what's crazy. More designers need to show their work. That's just, you have to do this. You have to show your work. But here's the thing that's really, really interesting to me is that there is, let's say 100% of designers are out there designing. I would say only 50 to 60% of designers are consistently showing their work. And out of those 50 or 60% of designers that are showing your work, I would say a very small percentage. If I could throw a number on it, it's a huge guess. I would say only 25% of those designers know how to confidently talk through their work. It's so, so important. So we need to be able to talk through your work in a succinct way, in a confident way, in a way that actually showcases your value. And I always say this, but you need to start thinking about yourself as a product. And anytime somebody's trying to sell you a product, they're trying to sell you on the vision, they're trying to sell you on the dream, they're trying to sell you on the value, they're not trying to sell you on what they want out of this transaction, which is of course, they would like to sell you something so they can make money. Nobody wants to buy, money for the other person, the sale for the other person. What I want to buy is something valuable to me. Let's say you're a designer applying to work with me. What is valuable to me? What kind of value will you bring to me in my business? How will you increase my revenue, my traffic, my leads? These are the things that you should be thinking about while you're talking through your work in a clear and succinct way. Here's four big points. Number one, you need to be confident. Number two, you need to be practiced. Number three, you need to be focused on value like we've already said. And number three, I don't know if that's how you spell succinct, but you need to be succinct. You need to be short. You need to be to the point, okay? Now, this is really, really tough. A lot of people have issue with the first one, which is just confidence in their work. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be the best designer in the world to get a position because like Mr. Miyagi said, even if you know karate, somebody always knows more karate. That means even if you're a talented designer, there will always be a more talented designer out there. So don't wait or feel insecure because you're not the most talented designer in the world. I'm just going to tell you, there's too many people, too many talented designers in the world for you to be the best in the world. Sure, win some awards, strive to be amazing. But at the end of the day, strive to be confident in the things that you do know how to do, what you are good at and what you can produce. Number two, you have to be practiced. This is a skill. This is a talent talking through your work. I would recommend creating your case study on Dribble, on Behance, on your website, and then talking through it to the camera. Film yourself on Loom or with your webcam or with your phone, whatever it is. Film yourself presenting your work then watch it back and cringe a lot, okay? And then after you're done doing that, go to your mom, your aunt, your friend, your spouse, your kids, your dog for God's sakes. I don't care who it is, but practice it some more. It's a muscle and the more that you work it, the stronger it will get. Practice this work of presenting your work. Get feedback from your auntie and your uncle and your dog and your mom and your friend and your spouse and say, hey, which parts of this presentation were really appealing or attractive? Imagine, friend of mine, that you're trying to hire somebody. Did I make a good impression on you? And let them give you hard and honest feedback. That's not something that a lot of people want to hear, but those are the people that are going to get the jobs. They're practiced and they're ready. You might know the, not know the exact questions they're going to ask you, but it would be helpful if you would at least practice answering some of these questions. If you just practice talking through and answering these questions, it might be helpful, okay? Uh, here's the other thing, practice. Yes, focus on value. We've already talked about that, succinct. Make sure you're clear and to the point. Here's another thing. When we talk about soft skills, and one of those, the highest top five soft skills right now that hiring managers and companies and teams are looking for is that you would have clarity of communication. Do you know how to send a stinking email? Do you know how not to blabber in a meeting? Do you know how to make your points step off, wait, listen, get feedback, and then pivot if that thought is wrong? You know how to be short and succinct with it. That's important. Let's talk about the next big point, which is presentation off and online. Can I just tell you, I rub my head like this all the time. When I look at designers work, they send me information. They say, hey, I'd love to work with you. I heard you're hiring an intern. I'd love to work with you. And then I go and I look at their Instagram 
and their Instagram is their own personal Instagram where it shows them drinking and partying and their profile picture is super unprofessional. Your presentation on and offline matter. So here's a crazy idea. I know it's 2024, everybody works from home in their pajamas, but if you're gonna interview, dress correctly, just dress professionally. And if you're gonna be online and start applying for positions, Sorry, people are going to stalk you. And if they don't like the pictures of you getting wasted last Friday night on your Instagram profile, they're going to go, nah, I don't think so. I think there's better, more professional options out there for me. They're going to say, this is the wrong product for me, the unreliable one, right? So a presentation online or offline matters. It needs to be professional or appropriate. Here's the thing, ready? Not everybody, and here's two really good examples. Not everybody's Instagram needs to look like mine or like somebody who makes content as part of their living where everything is dialed in and branded. But here's my other, my friend Vin Thomas who runs a very successful web design studio called Fixel, you should check it out. And his, his Instagram doesn't have anything about his design work, but it is professional. It's professional, it's appropriate, excuse me. It is very appropriate. Pictures of him, with his family, of his passions, of his side hobby. He's playing pickleball. He's with his children. All that is okay. I just need to make sure it's, if it's not professional, that it's at least appropriate, okay? And here comes the final piece of the day, which is what questions do you ask? Now, before we do this, we have some questions in the chat. Uh, Feline Erie says, what do you think about a designer having a section on their portfolio entitled Rough Book? showing all of their scribbles, working, workings out, rough work, et cetera, or keep all that stuff on dribble. Here's what I like on a portfolio. I wanna see all the work that is recent and relevant and you know very, very pointed to the type of work that you're applying for. That's what I wanna see. If you have some sort of other hobby or you have works in progress, I want those to be in either a different section of the website or I want them to be somewhere else, right? So I can see on your on your portfolio there being a large button or navigational element that says portfolio or works. And it goes to your case studies. I'd actually like to see those just on the home page. I want to get to them quickly, but that's another story. Now, once I've seen that, I see nothing but the type of design work that relates to me, the person who's looking to hire somebody, fantastic. If I see, you know, personal projects somewhere else, and I see some scribbles, I see some, you know, maybe you like to do animation, maybe you like to do sketching, maybe you like to do painting, and you put all that stuff in the about me section or little things to give me some insights about you, cool, awesome. But I've seen what you can do, that's what this site is all about. And if there's other stuff that would help me get to know you more, fine. If it's works in progress, maybe you could put those there, maybe you could put them in an Instagram feed somewhere, or maybe you just leave those for Dribble Instagram or somewhere else. But I, is, it's totally fine as long as you don't mingle the main thing, which is the work that you do and the value it brings with the unmain thing or the non-main thing would be other stuff about your life and interests. Okay, so very important. Let's talk about what questions you are supposed to ask. What questions do you ask when you get into this interview? Well, let's talk about a few of them and we're only going to hit a couple and then we're going to end and we're going to play a nice game of Friday Wordle, which I think is a way to kind of kick off the weekend, don't you? Let's do it together. Uh, where could I make the biggest impact if I started today? Oh, what a question. What a question. You're always gonna get to this point in the interview where they say, do you have any questions for us? And if your answer is, no, I do not, or how much do I get paid and when's lunch? These are bad answers to this question, right? You need to actually have questions to return fire with, because here's the truth. You're also interviewing them to see if it's a position that is right for you. It's, it, it, I get it. Some of us are so hungry for our first gig or a new gig or a better gig that we're just looking for the bag. We're looking for the paycheck. We're looking for the benefits. And is there coffee in the break room? Whatever it is. I just, that's the wrong mentality when you're job hunting. Your job hunt should be about how and who can I bring the most value to? And are they gonna be bringing value to me as well? Am I gonna be a beneficial member of this team? So where can I make the biggest impact if I was to start today? Holy cow, that lets me know as a hirer, somebody who's hiring, excuse me, that um, man, this, this person is serious about bringing value, about making impact. I might say, wow, great question. Um, you know, we're really struggling with processes and design systems, fantastic. I actually, I'm really, really good at processes and design systems. Let's talk about that. So you're actually, this is the time when you, when you get to ask questions where you get to introduce lines of reasoning and lines of conversation or threads of conversation 
that may not be had in the in this conversation or interview without these questions that you're asking. Here's another good question. How can I leverage my skills or experience to improve the process? The process, you say? Hold on. This person who's interviewing doesn't want to just push pixels and get a paycheck. This person wants to help us be a more streamlined and efficient team. I like this question. That's a fantastic question. Let's talk about another one. What's something missing on the team that you are looking for, okay? Or how about this one? I love this next one even more. What's the roadmap look like for the product or company? Wow, are you a forward thinker? Are you thinking about the future? Are you just not thinking about this interview and getting the job today, but on how you might not only bring value soon, but also in the future, in the near future, but the long term? Well, how you can play into that plan, how you can adapt to this team and their plan? That is a powerful question that you can ask. Hey, Speaking of powerful questions, powerful offerings, I want to take a second really quickly and just tell you about my 30-day UI design program. It's a 30-day UI design program from start to finish, teaches you everything you need to know about user interface design for digital products, websites, software, mobile applications. I want to tell you a little bit more about it in this quick little reel. Let me just give me two seconds of your time, actually more like 60 seconds of your time. We'll be right back. We'll play some Wordle, answer more of your questions. Are you ready to take your first steps into the exciting world of user interface design? Then stop wasting your time sifting through hours of YouTube videos and countless blog posts trying to figure out the puzzle of UI design. Here's the game changer, the 30-day UI designer program. It's an immersive 30-day hands on journey to teach you every aspect of UI design without breaking the bank. You're going to learn the most up-to-date and modern design techniques that professional UI designers are using right now, and you're going to use Figma to do it, which is the leading design tool in our industry. You'll learn how to design for iOS, Android, responsive websites that'll make you a master of the digital medium. The program features a challenging 30-day curriculum where you will go through each and every day learning the fundamentals of UI design. 30 design exercises, two capstone projects that will go in your new customized portfolio. You'll have a resume and you'll have case studies. So if you're done wasting your time and ready to start your journey to master user interface design, join the 30-day UI design program and let's make your dream become a reality. Hey, if you're not into learning right now, maybe that's not what you need. Maybe you just need some support. You need some help. I think the Design Champs community would be an amazing place. You can actually sign up just for the free tier, and then I get you access to some extra content, free resources. You actually jump right into the community, like I said, for free today. Uh, we just launched our very first design challenge, uh, and people can start to take those design challenges and post them in our very own dribble, kind of like gallery type thing. You also get access to free events, free resources, templates, all sorts of cool stuff, as well as some really cool posts that can help you learn as a creative. So maybe you just need a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of support, a little bit of community. Jump into the Design Champs. It's free to start. Just get in there, have some fun, meet up with us and become family, okay? Hey, let's play a little game of Wordle, shall we? I have no idea what today's word is. I haven't even started. If you don't know how to play, it's something like we like to do here on these live streams. Uh, it is a word game. You get five guesses. If you get letters right, it tells you. If you get them in the right spot, it tells you. If it's not in the word, it tells you. Let's start playing right now, shall we? Get a little wordle. And again, like always, this is a community uh, project. Uh, so we like to do this together and we also like to get rid of the ads so they're out of the way. All right, I always like to start out with the word truth. Um, or uh, there's a couple other words I like to start out with. Let's see what we get today with truth, okay? Uh, ooh, it, oh, see what I'm saying? The word truth always brings some highlights, some, some, some truth, some light to the subject. So we know that there is a T in the word and it's there. There is a U in the word, it's there. There's also an R, but it's in the wrong spot and that the H and the T are not there, okay? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What is something something? So maybe it's R something U T. Uh, how about ra, ra, route, ro, ro, whoa, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Um, we need a little help in the community here. So let's chat about it. Uh, P. P, not R. R is not there. I feel like the R, it has to start with R, Taylor, my friend from the Design Champs, is saying. So, ra, 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 route, route. Ooh, I like route, Philly. It says R, O, 
U-T-E. I swear if we get this right on the first one route, our... <gasps> Okay, listen to me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited we just got that. But I feel like we got that too easily. Are you guys looking at the answer online or something? Because, or are you just that good? That's what that's what I need to know. Because we, we got that, and that's amazing, and I love it. And I'm very, very excited. That's a Friday miracle. I feel like I need to turn the chat off, though, and maybe just do it myself. Because I feel like maybe, just maybe, you guys are making it too easy on me by cheating a little bit, but that's okay. Hey, we had a good time. <laughs> hey, friends, thank you so much for joining today. Um, I am so thankful for these live streams where I get to reach out and connect with you. Again, if you want to connect with me more, consider becoming a design champion. It's free to start, or you can jump up to a different tier where you get even more access to me. Or if you're not into that, maybe you just want to learn something, then maybe consider signing up the 30-day UI design program. Uh, the, the, it's a self-paced thing you can do in 30 days, or you can do it longer because you get lifetime access. Do it at your own pace if you want to, but challenge yourself for the 30 days. I'm actually in the middle of my very first cohort, uh, where I can take up to 15 students through the program personally, hands-on. Uh, the next cohort is starting in March, so you can sign up for that also if you are interested. Friends, again, thank you so much. If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Uh, on this live stream so you know when more live streams and videos like this one come out and with all that being said i hope you have a fantastic friday have a great weekend keep designing amazing things and we will see you in the next one